my misconception and extraordinary business. <coughs> Have you ever experienced something absolutely mind-blowing or that you just cannot help telling someone about? Have you ever had an adrenaline rush? Your heart started beating fast and your entire being filled with excitement. I'm certain that at some point in life, everyone has experienced something like this at least once. These phenomenal emotions are, one, are what one might refer to as reactions to good entertainment. In today's world, in, entertainment is a huge part of our culture. It is hard for most people to get through a day without some amount of it. Entertainment is a vast term and implies a, a broad variety of things. One popular form of, it, of this is professional sports. Now, entertainment should give us excitement and an extraordinary feeling or experience. Video games, bungee jumping, roller coasters, skydiving, etc., you name it, are just a few of the things that get our adrenaline pumping and are very simply entertaining. One cannot deny that we love entertainment and our free time would be somewhat boring without it. Professional sports fits very nicely into this world of excitement. Most people can only dream about being professional athletes, so they love seeing these people who they dream about, um, these people who are seemingly superhuman doing mind-blowing things on the court. Therefore, they will pay a lot of money to, to view a live. A game of professional sports becomes entertainment, taken to a whole other level of greatness. This type of entertainment is a business of extremely hard-working individuals and teams who earn their millions because they achieve the ability to give excitement to a culture that is hungry for extraordinary things. My friends, this amazing business of authentic, mind-blowing, and passionate entertainment is called the National Basketball Association. The National Basketball Association, or the NBA, is a network of 30 teams with 13 players per team. Each team is its own business um, under team rules and administration. Um, and above that is the NBA itself, um, the organization itself, which has uh, NBA league rules, um, which teams are, are, um, are under. So there's two levels of, um, I guess, two levels of, of uh, administration there. The NBA consists of the best basketball players in the entire world, and actually is the most popular sport in the in the world because of the many international players in the league. Yes, I did say it is the most popular sport in the entire world. NBA players are are, are uniquely highly skilled, gifted athletes um, that make up a small um, percentage of Americans. The NBA is divided into two conferences, East and West. There are regional sub-conferences under those two conferences, but um, the two major and two most important that the NBA revolves around is East and West. The NBA, like I said, is the most elite level of, ba of basketball plays, where the talent, skill, and athleticism are showcased for everybody in the spotlight. The best of, the best of these NBA players are extremely, ridiculously highly paid, and the lesser players still make a less ridiculous amount. Still, uh, still tons of money. And the, the life in the NBA for, for an average player can be described in the two uh, major divisions, off-season and season. The off-season consists of hard work, perseverance, motivation, sweat, diligence, conditioning, weightlifting, practicing each and every day, both individually and as a team. Um, and they, they, they practice every day from normal business hours, like any business would, and sometimes even longer for players who really want to be the best. Um, there is so much work and, in, and intense training during the offseason to get and keep their body in perfect um, physical shape. Um, the offseason is really where players improve their game and take it to the next level um, uh, to be great and not just to be an average NBA player. <coughs> the, the next division of, a new, of life in the NBA is the season. Season consists of 82 games, and then there's playoffs, which are four rounds long. Um, each round is the best of seven series for each of the teams competing. After a team season, the playoff is done, is over. Um, the, each player gets a two-week break, then they start uh, intense off-season training. The game is so competitive and fast that the players must be in peak physical condition to be successful. But the, these players are some of the hardest working employees in America. The NBA is a huge part of both national and international modern entertainment. Um, it is probably the second uh, most popular sport um, um, during the winter and, uh, and is the most popular sport in the, in international, um, in the, in the international world. <coughs> sports fans love 
and pay money to watch the athleticism and the many jaw-dropping uh, moments that the NBA has to offer. From intense last-second buzzer-beating shots to the thrilling gravity defying floor-shaking monsters done. Sports fans love and enjoy when the spotlight shines on the best of the best, and it is finally showtime. Society loves the game, and tons of money is invested in it, so there's an extremely high demand in our culture for its success. Hence, the players must work hard to keep the standards that they have that's been set. The, the, the mere popularity of the, the success of the NBA itself um, raises a huge income for the players. <coughs> the American dream is something we are all very familiar with in school, not that we had to live it, but that we have read about it in books and, and uh, talked about it. Um, the American dream is um, where a person who is um, not as privileged as some people that are well off may be, and maybe is um, living in poverty um, or does not have as much um, success in life coming easy to them, um, can work hard and work their way up the social ladder of society and um, become successful and make a difference in their community and in their world. <coughs> Many of the players, most of the players in the NBA, um, really personify the American dream by making it to the NBA. Um, a lot of the players come from poverty-stricken neighborhoods, maybe the ghetto, um, as we, we would call it, and um, they're not, they, they, they don't have the privileges that we have as, as well off um, individuals and families where, um, where money may not be as tight as, as, as their um, childhood situations were. Um, so it's really um, a big deal for them to be able to climb to the NBA because um, for a lot of them, basketball was their only key, was their only um, ticket out. Players have been interviewed, and I've said that they are thankful that the NBA, um, for the NBA because it has made a huge impact on their life. Um, it has helped them stay out of trouble from drugs, gang life, um, etc., and, and it helped them to get their families and themselves out of poverty. Um, but don't forget, it's only through hard work and perseverance that these players are able to have that opportunity. Now, each player is required by the team and the league to, um, to be involved in a certain minimum amount of community service. Um, some ways in which um, these players can be involved in that um, is uh, by some, some projects called NBA Cares, Free to Achieve, and Make-A-Wish Foundation. Uh, I'll go into details on those a little bit later. Um, their players are required to do a certain amount in their community, um, but most of the players go above and beyond the requirement um, to help their community because they enjoy it, and uh, frankly, a lot of them came out of the communities like that, so it is um, important to them to go back into their communities and help the places where they came from and places that are similar to them, to their childhood. The NBA is great for the community, and the league's um, promotions are very beneficial to the well-being of the community. However popular the NBA may be, there are still those um, people who don't like it and criticize it. Um, they say things like it's overpaid, it's corrupt, um, that the players are only in it for the money, no passion, a um, bunch of thug players, and uh, some people think there's no defense in the NBA, um, and others just think it's boring. All of these criticisms can be factually proven wrong. Chad Bolin, um, Vice President of Corporate partnerships with the Memphis Grizzlies um, helped me to see why each, how each of those things is wrong. Um, I, I already believe it was wrong, but he, he gave me statistics and facts that I'll get into a little bit later, um, that each of them can really be proven wrong. Um, wrong impressions um, are, a lack or are a result of a lack of correct knowledge about the NBA. Um, and, I believe, and I believe and am prepared to prove to you that the NBA is not overpaid and there is much passion, nobility, um, excellence and respectability in the organization. It is a well-run organization, and um, it is at such an incredible level, elite level of play. <coughs> you don't have to love it, or even watch it, support it, but you should at least appreciate it for what it is. Now, besides the hard work and the, everything the players undergo, the NBA hinges on one vital um, factor, our culture. Um, hate it or love it, our culture values and loves the NBA for what it is. Um, the majority of it does. They love the entertainment, they love everything about it. Um, so it is a major economic force in our country. Um, it is really all around us in our world. If you walk into a sports store or a mall or into a nice factory outlet or any place where they sell sports apparel, 
um, ABA, NFL, NHL, um, soccer, you name it, um, are very present in the sports stores. Um, companies like Nike, Under Armour, Reebok, Converse, Gatorade, and others um, uh, make and sell products to, um, to athletes, both in the NBA and to normal people. Um, those products for uh, like sports drinks for Gatorade, shoes, undershirts, um, uh, jerseys, um, any kind of apparel you can dream of. Now, these companies are very smart because they see that our culture loves the NBA so much and looks up to the players and their skills that they take what um, they see the players are so good. So they say, here, I'll give you a contract, an um, endorsement. I'll pay you money to wear my product in the game and just around, maybe in a commercial. So the fans see these players wearing um, Under Armour or wearing Nike or drinking Gatorade in a commercial and having it run out of space like you see in all the commercials. Um, and, and they think, oh, that looks pretty good on them. Maybe it looks good on me. And things like that start to be triggered in their mind. And so they go to the stores and buy them. Um, as a result, each of these companies gets a gob of money off of this because um, fans see them want to buy it. And then the players um, uh, rake in a lot of money because um, they get endorsements and expensive contracts from these companies to wear these. Um, and players um, often have this, they'll switch around between these contracts and they will go in and out between Nike and Under Armour. Um, they, a lot of players experience most of the um, endorsements from a lot of the different companies. If our culture did not value the NBA, don't get me wrong, it would not be as successful as it is. Um, no offense to people who like to read, but if, 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 if people love enjoying watching you read like they do the NBA, you can make them dollars. Um, I promise you. Um, it's really about what our culture values, and until our culture decides that, they just, they don't, that the NBA is not fun anymore and that they don't like it, they may play a drop and be rich, or as rich as they are. Now, in order for our culture to keep loving it, the NBA players have to keep producing. The NBA players um, work hard. They earn their incredible income, uh, their income um, through training, practicing, traveling all over the country many miles every year. Um, games, um, 82 in fact, um, community service, and many of the players um, are involved in special eating habits and diet um, to to help maintain their shape outside of the condition. Summer workouts, um, as I mentioned earlier, are very vital for the, um, to the players in the, the player's life where they um, do the majority of their hard physical training. Um, and all of the um, seasons and playoffs uh, moments of glitz and uh, where the spotlight's on them and where they get recorded doing the monster stunts or making the game winning shots or racing on the court to block shots. All of these moments are um, a direct result because of hard work um, that they go through during the summer workouts that, that aren't televised very much and they don't get a lot of popularity for at the time. Um, but when the season comes around, that hard work pays off because um, the, the summer is really the time where they elevate their game to the next level and they, they give it that touch of greatness that they need um, that is really vital and that, that they just cannot get during the season um, because the season is filled with team practices and games and um, traveling all over the country. So the off season is intense, really in focus, very focused. Um, an 82 game season, um, combined with traveling all over the country and um, playing um, a couple of nights a week at least, um, and then if you do well enough in the season, going to the playoffs, um, which lasts roughly two months, combines for an extremely tired business year. Players are exhausted after a game. Um, take a game that you've been the most exhausted after in any game that you've ever played in. Um, that cannot compare to the kind of exhaustion these players go through. Um, each game is, is, is 48 minutes of actual game time, um, 12 uh, minutes each quarter, four quarters. Um, it's loaded with speed, roughness, and intensity. Um, and the, um, the level of play is, 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 is off the charts. It has been, it's been a statistic fact for some time now that, an, that in, in an average NBA game, a player that's a lot of playing and that's the main player on the team will actually sprint up to three to five miles in one game. Sprint, not jog. And that's not just a dead sprint. That sprinting while getting hit on the side, um, shoved down to the floor, um, using their arms in every which way, cutting in and out of, of spaces. Um, this is not just running a straight line 100 yard dash. This is sprinting with people um, trying to affect your sprinting and um, dribbling the ball at the same time. So hand-eye coordination along with the sprint. Um, so
So this is why they must work their tails off to be in proper physical shape to be successful in this elite business world. There's a high demand for this business, so the players must go through all of this successfully to uphold the standard that isn't set. <coughs> the NBA players come together um, um, have come together for many years throughout the NBA to form what is known as the NBA Players Union. The, um, the Players Union and the administration is under a concept of pay known as the Collective Bargaining Agreement. This says that the players get 57% of revenue made from the team. That percentage of money um, is divided up between 13 players respectively from the team. There are 13 players on this team. Um, that's a lot of money. Uh, the team rakes in um, and got um, tons of money, so the players can divide that money up. So when you're not dividing that money up between many players, um, each player gets a very nice income. Um, and then besides that, you have your other sponsorships from sports companies um, that want to uh, that want you to advertise their stuff, and so that also rakes in a fairly incredible amount of money. Um, as I mentioned earlier, there um, are some minimum service requirements that the NBA um, players go through. Um, not go through, they enjoy what they're they enjoy doing. It. Um, the NBA cares is where um, they go into the community and uh, help repair houses, um, help serve food for homeless people at, at food kitchens, at shelters, um, but do anything they can to serve the community and to bring hope where hope is needed. And put a smile on my face. Read to Achieve is where NBA players can go into libraries or schools and read books to small children who um, are um, who may not can afford books or, or, or don't value education very much, and they go into the schools where um, where, where they can read um, publicly to the children, and they promote education to a community of kids where education may not be the most popular thing, where the kids may not value school very much, maybe the parents aren't involved in their child's um, educational life. Um, and they promote education for the child um, thinks that education maybe is not cool enough for him or he's more involved in um, drugs or alcohol, you name it. Um, the uh, players go in and um, the, the kids see that these players, they look up to these players and when they see the players coming in education, it promotes to them. And so it makes a great influence um, educationally on these um, students. <coughs> Uh, also, the Make a Wish Foundation is a foundation that um, a ki that a child who is needy um, is on um, sadly is about to have his life ended by a tragic disease, um, different circumstances that are tragic in the children in the child's life or in a um, young teenager's life. Players go in and spend a day hanging out with a child um, and uh, put a smile on his face and give him some hope and make him give him a memory that he um, that he uh, made need before. Um, his life of tournament is um, tragically ended. Um, but there are minimum requirements for these players, and um, a lot of players go above and beyond and help and, and love helping their communities. Jason Williams is actually known to um, go to Le Bonner and St. Jude um, and serve without media there and not even call in and say he was coming. Just serve because um, he enjoyed serving the kids. Um, he didn't much like adults, but he loved going in and just talking to the kids who were sick. Jason Williams, um, I apologize, is, um, he's a former Grizzly, um, now is with an IMD. Um, the NBA All-Star Weekend this year in New Orleans was a big hit um, because of uh, obviously it raised a lot of money for New Orleans and the city after Hurricane Katrina. Um, but a couple of days before the All-Star game, um, everybody came down a little bit early. Um, a hundred of NBA affiliates and the All-Star players themselves went to work um, on places in, in New Orleans that were damaged by Hurricane Katrina. They worked for a full day um, in the sun and sweat um, to help the damaged community and to give hope to people that needed the hope um, and that needed um, an, extra, an, an extra person there to talk to or to minister to them. Um, so that was a very big deal in New Orleans. Um, and it was a great community effort that came together and, um, and saw um, things, re things repaired that were damaged and, um, made a really big impact in the community. Now, with the above criticisms that I hope have now been answered for you, um, there's there are there's still going to be people who say, well, what about the individual players? What do they do, and do they really care as much as much as they much as it may seem that they do? Um, well, here's some individual experiences from the NBA itself. Dwight Howard, NBA All Star, 
um, of the Orlando Magic, um, dominating power forward um, in the Eastern Conference, is an outspoken and strong Christian. Howard is a is, is looked up to by many young um, young children and all kinds of NBA fans. After games, he has been he has been known to stick around um, for the fans and give his testimony and to minister to people um, because he cares and he um, and he lives the gospel statement and the um, and the and the, and the calling that, 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 that God gives to all of us to go out and spread the gospel. So I, Howard cares about this and he also maintains. Um, a great standard in the uh, as an all-star. Players like Tim Duncan, Chris Paul, former player David Robinson, Tracy McGrady, Alan Iverson, and many others are great examples of, of players who, some of which are Christians, some are not, but they're all law-abiding citizens that um, just play hard, they're competitive, and they, um, and they don't cause much trouble at all. Alan Iverson is a great example of, of a person um, in the NBA that is completely covered in tattoos, um, has every headband and, and sleeve, whatever, that you want to uh, put on. Um, he looks like a gangster, um, and hence he is given a very bad reputation by some NBA haters, I'll say. Um, he, many of the criticisms under him are not true. He has never once been in serious trouble with the NBA. Um, he has never, um, he has always been one of the NBA's favorite players, a player that most guys in the game would, would kill to play with. Um, he's, uh, he's extremely one of, he's one of the hardest working players in the NBA, which is a big deal because they all work hard. And um, he, he brings it every night on the court. A player like this, uh, from the outside, can seem to be just a thug or just, just a rough bully. Um, but if you take a look at him as a person, um, he's, he, he, he's a good law-abiding citizen and he's a good example of uh, the kinds of players in the NBA that we take for granted and stereotype too much. Dwayne Wade, an NBA All-Star as well, from the Miami Heat, was quoted saying that he is thankful for the NBA for helping him stay out of um, trouble, live a clean, successful life, and um, keep him, keeping him away from drugs, alcohol, gang life, um, and the list goes on. One familiar um, name to our society is Ron Artest. Ron Artest was um, involved in a, in a brawl on the court um, a few years back. And he actually went up in the stands and punched a fan. Uh, of course, this gave a lot of um, a lot of negative connotations to the NBA at that time. Um, but the NBA did not stand for that. They um, they gave him very severe penalties. The following are true. He missed the rest of the season. It was about mid-season this happened, um, and he was the main player on the team. He was fined an extremely heavy amount of money, um, and even for him, it was an extremely heavy amount of money. Um, the NBA simply does not put up with troublemakers, and there are hardly any troublemakers in the NBA. Um, the NBA was not involved in a serious, um, in, a, in serious trouble or into, um, besides this, in the past several years, and it is a very well-run organization. They um, have seat fines, as you see with Ron Artest, um, and then really hardly ever have any trouble out of the players, um, because the players are, are good citizens just like us. The only difference between them and us is that they're insanely good at what they do. Um, but they're citizens just like us and like to have a um, relationship with their community. Negative impressions are because of fast stereotyping. Um, the NBA is up close and personal in that they're not wearing pads. And so um, when you see a player on the court, he has shorts and a tank top on and maybe headbands and tattoos. Um, but he's not covered in pads or, under, or hiding under a helmet. We get to see an up close, uh, more intimate, personal um, view of those players on the court. We get to see what their face looks like, we get to see what their body looks like. They're not hidden from us. They're very exposed to, to society on TV and live. Um, this is, I think this is the main reason why they're so negatively viewed because people can see um, how they think their body looks trashy or not well kept. Um, and if they actually knew what they, what they go through and the kind of people they are, they would see that totally wrong and that's only a stereotype. With all the given information that, um, that I've laid to the table um, and complimented about the NBA, I think we should arise, arise from the cobwebs created from rumors and stereotypes and see what the NBA really is about. We need to give the NBA the appreciation and respect it deserves, even if we don't support it. There's an old saying that goes as follows, give credit where credit is due. Um, the NBA is clearly worth giving credit to, so we should give that credit there where it is due. 
At Westminster Academy, we, we refer to um, a saying that um, really uh, sums up what our school um, strives to, um, to keep going after year after year. Love that which is worth loving. The MBA is clearly worth loving, I appreciate it, because it, um, it, it, it is involved in beauty, excellence, passion, nobility, and respectability that the organization is centered around. So go now and enjoy the remainder of the NBA playoffs this year and watch the magic of the players doing unbelievable things on the hardwood. You will enjoy it if you just let yourself do so. It would be wrong to miss the beauty of something because of a misconception.
then what if Fox Games actually did basketball? Then you need to have a reality check. But um, you because, you because culture says something's good, that doesn't necessarily mean it's good. I, I agree with that. Um, but um, I hate to say it's not in the scope of my paper, but um, I'm just taking what the what I know the culture enjoys. Um, which some some of what the culture enjoys is good and is not and should be um, and should be participated in. Some is um, immoral, and uh, there's a lot of things the culture loves that we do not agree with here. And um, the uh, can you say the last part of your question again? Just, I don't understand how something can be good because culture is good. Um. I'm not arguing that the, that the NBA, um, that it is something that the culture should continue to um, to value and that we should put as much emphasis on because there are better there are better role models in our country, obviously, than NBA players. Um, nobody's perfect, but there are better people that we should look up to um, and that get looked up to um, sometimes. Um, so it is part of the culture's fault that um, maybe it's not the best thing to have in the modern world um, because it's not, um, it's just a game really. It's how these players make a living. And for a lot, for all the players in the it's more than a game for them, but to us it's um, just something to watch on TV and have fun doing. Um, but I, was, um, whether or not it's the best thing to modern, I would say it's just what happens in our culture. And um, as long as that is the case, and that's how it be. We talked a lot about like people everywhere, like tons of fans loving basketball. And do you think that is just because it's culturally acceptable, or is it that we're seeing something that is actually good in basketball and recognizing the goodness and loving it? Is that I think as people, we're um, we because we're created in the image of God, and that we um, do have this desire for transcendence, um, that we are constantly striving for something that's above ourselves and to be and measure up to that. And um, not to have this um, uh, negative point of view, but when we see that we can't quite measure up to what we would hope for, um, we enjoy watching people do the things we can do. We like watching a great musician do music or watching um, any great person do whatever they do great because it's showing us something that's transcendent of, 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 of the norm. And um, it's, it's popular because it's just exciting and it just gives us entertainment.
like it even more because of how good it is. I, I, I'm an avid NBA fan, even before I wrote this paper and before I did this research, and I actually like the NBA about three times more than I did before I wrote it because I just, even, I knew a lot about it before I wrote it, but I found so much out, so many details and statistics out um, that made me appreciate it even more because I just, uh, even at that point, didn't know what was after they go through that. So, so if people would think more about why they like it, they would realize that there is something beyond that. There is something yeah. beyond the entertainment factor. Right. And, and out of the things you mentioned, just as it, 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 quickly as you came to the bell here in a second, what would you point to and say, this is the one or two things that make it so good? Um, the... Is it your power level? Power level. Um, the... Just the fine tuning. I mean, I don't think the fine tuning is what people like to watch most because it may not be attention, but the talent, the, um, the, these people are really kind of superhuman in what they can do with their bodies. They're just not very good in the world to do the things with their bodies that they do, perform at the level they perform at. I think 